Um, right. So today we're going to continue um, chapter three, uh, which is market failure. Right. Um, so we have stopped until um, what uh, the um, measuring the efficient equilibrium. Yeah. Um, and then we measure the welfare gain on society. Right. For today, we're going to look at the property rights. Right. Okay. So. Uh, based on the discussion uh, last uh, class, um, last subtopic, uh, uh, so we actually haven't uh, kept the efficient, um, the efficient, or uh, we haven't um, achieved the education efficiency. So, we haven't achieved it yet. So, we said the market, uh, the market failed to provide efficient solution, right? Um, right. Um, so how to answer this um, kind of problem? Saya macam mana nak nak counter ataupun macam mana nak solve this problem? Therefore, um, okay, one of the reason eh, uh, one of the reason uh, berlakunya um, inefficiency adalah the absence um, of the property rights, yeah, of the good, yeah, the absence of the property right of the good. Maksudnya. Um, how to solve the problem, macam saya kata tadi, how to solve the problem, it's by implementing property right. So, what is property right? Yeah, uh, Property rights, uh, by definition, are uh, the set of valid claims to a good or resource that permits its use and the transfer of its ownership through sale. Which means, um, generally, yeah, generally, kita boleh kata, um, Assigning the property rights to the users of the uh, resources. Siapa yang nak menggunakan sumber ataupun public goods itu, kita berikan dia hak untuk menggunakan. Jadi kita kena tengoklah, ya, kalau based on two parties, usually kita akan based on two parties lah. Number one is the users and number two is the um, company which is the, uh, apa ni, uh, perfect competition ataupun the, the market itself lah. Eh, company yang nak pel, buat pollution itu dan satu lagi user ataupun uh, individual yang nak um, fresh air, yang nak uh, environmental uh, apa ni uh, yang bersih. Yeah, environment yang bersih. Right. And uh, these property rights are generally limited by law uh, or social custom which means it it is legal and it is based uh, on the enforcement of law in the uh, country. Yeah. Okay. And uh, the uh, how it operates. Yeah. So, kita kena tahu dulu lah. Yeah. Um, what is uh, this property right? So, kita nak tahu siapa yang own the rights to water supply. Contohnya. Siapa yang owns the rights uh, to the fresh air. Yeah. Right. Um. So, contohnya kat sini lah, eh, do, do individual own the right to breathe clean air or do polluting firms own the right to contaminate it? Maknanya siapa yang kita nak assign the property right? Adakah individual yang nak fresh air ataupun kepada company yang nak contaminate it ataupun nak uh, membebaskan pollution itulah, eh, persyamaran itu. Right? So, um, this property right kita panggil sebagai um, teori eh, on this property right adalah the chaos theorem ya yeah? chaos theorem um, so what is this chaos theorem um, it states that pro proper assignment of property rights to any good even if externalities are present will allow bargaining between the affected parties such that an efficient solution can be obtained no matter which party holds the right so, tak kisahlah mana satu individual ataupun user ke ataupun the company atau firm itself yang dapat property right. Dia bukan dua-dua, salah satu parti yang akan dapat property right ini. Jadi, dia ada bargaining. Bargaining uh, situation. ya. Yeah? So, kita boleh bagi. Contohnya, kalau property right itu owns by us, individual, to have fresh air, then um, the polluting firms ini akan bargain kepada this uh, dia akan discuss lah eh bargaining to this uh, to us to individual to pollute 
to have uh, maksudnya dia akan bayar lah eh berapa banyak yang uh, cost untuk dapat fresh air tu dia akan bayar untuk dia buat pollution so bargaining itu akan berlaku ya yeah? macam tu lah ya yeah? so in this point of view we have to know that um, there are assumptions of course ya yeah? so the first assumption is that transaction cost uh, zero ya yeah? so the transactions are costless and second one damages are access accessible and also measurable so kita boleh access dan measure berapa damage yang berlaku So, itu adalah assumption kita lah, ya. Yeah. So, to illustrate this Kyo's uh, theorem, so we have to revisit, kita kena gunakan uh, market model of refined petroleum itu yang kita belajar last class, ya. Yeah. So, this, uh, apa ni, uh, refined petroleum ini, kita boleh uh, put yeah, the assignment of property rights and bargaining can restore efficiency. Yeah. So, kita nak tengok bila kita put bargaining rights on this refined uh, sorry, refined petroleum ini, then kita nak tengok apa yang akan berlaku.